What's up, y'all? I'm back with yet another video, and today I want to talk to you guys about one of the best shows that have dropped in 2020, and it's probably become my favorite show, maybe ever, in terms of anime of all time. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Rent a Girlfriend. Rent a Girlfriend is a really unique show, and one of the reasons why I think that this show is the best show of 2020 is because it takes place in college. And I know that there's a lot of college anime out there, not as much as there should be, but there is quite a bit. But the reason why I think that this show specifically is so great and probably the best show of 2020, it might even be one of the better shows of anime in general is because I think it's a turning point for anime. It's, it's showing that anime is growing up. Because if you guys remember 10, maybe 15 years ago, if you're even old enough to have watched anime back then, a lot of the anime back then was really childish. It had kids as main characters. It was, it had funny cutaway gags. It had a lot of like, like really just crude jokes that kids would like and most adults would go, ah, it's not really funny. But this show shows that anime is, is growing up. It's getting more adult. A lot of the things that happen in the show feel more adult and they hit you right in the home spot. If you've lived this or are going to live this or wish you could have lived it. So anybody in college, while you might watch it and think, oh man, there goes the childish cutaway gag, there goes, I mean, this show doesn't have any of the childish stuff that you would expect from a shonen, such as like the nosebleeds or um, cutaway gags where the guy gets his head like chibied out and like, it doesn't have any of that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, it feels really centered and really focused and it, it feels like a college anime. It feels like a college kid's lifestyle. There's moments where he goes to have drinks with his buds. There's moments where he goes after girls. There's moments where he wishes girls would go after him. And there's just a lot of moments where you see this college kid who wants to have everything figured out, but doesn't actually have everything figured out. And he has to go from being a child who just thinks that life should work this way to realizing that he's not a kid anymore and he has to become an adult and he has to make himself better in order to get the things that he wants. So in that sense, I feel like this anime is a really good transitional period for anime, for the entire industry, for what people think of anime when they watch it, for what people have the stereotype of anime or the prejudice of anime when they hear about it. So this show is a complete jump from what I think anime used to be and what it could be. Now that I've gotten all the philosophical stuff out of the way, let me actually talk about the anime itself. So the anime itself, Rent a Girlfriend, is about this agency that allows you to rent a girlfriend and they're all little baddies so what he does is he goes and rents a girlfriend after his girlfriend breaks up with him in college anybody who's ever been broken up with knows that it hurts it sucks it breaks your heart and this was his first girlfriend in college and he's a virgin and he was just so overly sexually charged for this one girl that it just devastated him when they broke up so he goes out and he rents a girlfriend and then he falls for that girl. So now he has two girls that he's fallen in love with, one girl that he just fell in love with her as, as a person, and another girl that he's fallen in love with the idea of her from what they could have been based off of what they had. You see when I say that this story is really adult and like why it's really taken on a turn for something that's way more adult than most other anime that you would have expected to come out in the year 2020? One of the cool things that I like about this show is the characters as a whole, because the characters don't feel tropey based off the fact that they have a character progression. So we'll start with the main character. Main character starts off like a bitch. I mean, you hate him. He's way too horny, which kind of kills it for you because you're just like, bro, calm down. He's kind of childish in the way that he thinks in the first couple episodes. He won't stand up for himself or anybody around him at all. And to top it all off, he's lovesick puppy and it just, you don't like it. But if you've ever had your heart broken, you know that that's just what it that's just what it is. When you get your heart broken, the only thing that you can think of is the person that broke your heart. The only thing that you can do is visualize that person being with somebody else and it breaks your heart even more. And that happens in this show. And he uh, spanks the bank, if you know what I mean, a couple of times, which I feel like they didn't have to add, but the fact that they added it helps helps you feel for this character as like, bro, you gotta stop. Like, when you see the character do this kind of stuff, it, it makes you think, yep, that's that's what you would do, but you gotta do better. <laughs> and then we'll move on to the Renner girlfriend, who, in my opinion, has probably one of the best character progressions because when she starts off, it's just business. It's, yo, I'm coming on this date with you, all business, I hate you and you suck. But the more that the show goes on, the more she starts to feel sorry for him because of how pathetic she, he is. And then the more she kind of starts to fall for him because of how pathetic he's trying not to be. His character progression leads to her character progression. He tries so hard not to be pathetic because of how great of a woman that she is. And he realizes that the way that he is currently, he'll never be able to get her. So what he does is he decides to just get better. And by him deciding to get better, it makes him more appealing to her. So she ends up falling for him. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> what I think makes this show so unique is the sense of you feeling like somebody actually has to grow up. You seeing this character and thinking he's gotta grow up. And then by episode five, he's like, 
I got to grow up. And you're like, yeah, bro, that's the energy. And then he like actively puts forth effort to grow up, to become a better person, to become a better main character. And you actively watch him sort of become better throughout the show. And it's it's what everybody's always wanted inside of a show, character progression. Everybody always wants it. They always get upset when a show doesn't have it. And this show has it. And then on top of that, this show has a plethora of what I would call genres, but I think it's more so just it has some tropes put in that fit certain genres, such as like when he's visualizing or fantasizing about a girl, you get to see it through his mind. It kind of fills the etchy quota that you feel like you need in a show like this. And on top of that, it kind of gets a little harem-y a little bit where his ex-girlfriend wants him mainly because she's a manipulator. The girl that he wants kind of wants him because he's trying to be better. And then another girl wants him really kind of just because they felt like she should want him. So they just threw her in there. So I mean, it does kind of give you a little bit of a harem vibe. But ultimately, this show is a doki doki heartbeat of a good time. I mean, it it absolutely touches you everywhere that you need it to touch you. I mean, there are points where you, you start to feel sad because you see what's happening. You're like, I don't want this to happen. You start to, your heart starts to beat really fast because you're starting to get you know, caught up in the moment of the show. And I think that this show is a really good show for people who are in college or just got out of college or even people who are a little bit older and want to revisit the days of college or high school where you just, you want somebody, but you don't know who you want. You don't know why you want them. And you just lust after everybody. And you just wish that everybody lusted after you. And they probably did or didn't. But that's what this character goes to. He wants just wants a girlfriend that's all he wants he just wants somebody to love and to hold and to be with and it's so hard for him to get that because of how he is and just the way that he goes about the situations that he's placed in so he decides to do better and that's perfect that's what anybody should want in anime is for their character to just do better and actively try to do better and i think that's the problem with the animation industry is a lot of times you can't make your character do better because if you make a character do better at a certain point they, it's only so good they can get i mean that's the exact reason why shows like dragon ball z are still going because they just refuse to give goku any kind of character progression they might give him a little bit here and there so people don't get stalled out with the show but they're not going to give him enough to actually change his character as a whole and even shows like naruto where naruto kind of had a little bit of progression here and there he's just the same character from start to end that he's always been but that's what i think makes this show so unique and that's why i think this show is kind of a step in the right direction for the animation industry because it's showing that you can have a character progress you can have a character change over the course of your show and it's not a bad thing it's good it's what people want and it might end the show like you might actually have to end the show because your character has achieved all the goals that you wanted to achieve but i think that'll do far more for the animation industry and in drawing in new people than it would for keeping the old people because even though it's good to keep your old fans happy at a certain point you have to draw in new fans in order to build what you have so this show is amazing it's awesome i think it's a little slow in the beginning and i think a lot of people are going to be upset with the tropes of the characters but i think the show is perfect and you should check it out to give you guys an indication of how great this show is and how much traction it picked up throughout the course of its life on crunchyroll it already had a season two confirmed just hours after the first season concluded and they haven't released a date for it yet but everybody assumes that it'll be around fall 2021 as long as you know no viruses shut the world down again so let that just show you that this show is so good that they already had a greenlit second season with the show just concluding so take that for what it's worth but you got to go check out rent a girlfriend it's definitely one of the better shows of 2020 to drop and even though i knew i was going to like it and even though i love the concept of it just by reading it it has far surpassed what i thought i would want and it far surpassed how much i thought i would like it so i think i would have given the show like a 7 out of 10 just off the rip based off of the summary that i read for the show but i think after watching it i'm definitely gonna have to call this show like a 9 out of 10. this show is super high tier for me there's only a few like minute problems in the show that i would say so you know with those few problems i don't want to get into them because this is supposed to be a video praising the show not a video demonizing the show so because of i'm praising it i'm just not gonna talk about the bad stuff because that's how you're supposed to do it so yeah this show's a nine out of ten go check out rent a girlfriend season two probably drops fall 2021 so go ahead and watch it now that way you're ready for the drop of the season two also i'm gonna be reading the manga because i gotta i can't wait till fall 2021 to to watch it again i have to read the manga so when I read the manga, I'm probably going to come on here and tell you all about the manga and do a manga deep dive because uh, this show really did touch my soul. This is one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. So go check out Rent a Girlfriend. Sorry for such a long video and I'm sorry that I took away you guys' hump day, but this show has some hump day quality. So go check it out and, you know, get some of your hump day qualities in there. That's it for me, y'all. I'm Kevin. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> Tryna be nice, tryna be nice Baby, you nice, but it ain't right It ain't gon' work, I ain't gon' fight no. hey. Tryna be nice, tryna be nice
tryna be nice, tryna be nice. Take no chance, I'm holding my dice. I'm not cold, but I'm sipping on ice. It's gon' be all cool. I do not want you. I just don't wanna be rude. You ask, do I think you cute? You so sweet like fruit, but I don't think that's true. Yeah.